They say you are what you eat, so I don't eat chicken feet. But I love me some of Grandma's pickled beets. Well, cut it up, put it in the pan, throw it over your shoulder and see where it lands right here in the farmer's kitchen. Baiters, taters, beans and corn, the cows in the barn and the sheep's been shorn, kids in the barnyard chasing Grandpa's chicken. Chicken, chicken. Spices, slices, cuts and dices, gonna slash your grocery prices right here in the farmer's kitchen. Help you grow your garden good with recipes to suit your mood. Try some grub you've never tried before. Smash it with a wooden mallet, gonna educate your palate. Right here in Farmer's Kitchen, in Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen. We're gonna cook something good now. Funding for Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen brought to you by... L81 Bottling Company. Taste, love, and share the tradition. Harvest Energy Solutions. Harvest cabins when you absolutely have to get away. House warmings, meeting all of your outdoor living and fireplace needs. Kentucky Sheep and Goat Development Office. Try something different tonight. Rose Farm Supply. Family farming and commitment to our customers since 1982. Salt Rocks, the flavor of life. Woods Equipment Company has every tool you need to make working the land as rewarding as hunting it. The city of Stanford, Kentucky. Come home to Stanford. Chrisman Mill Vineyards. Good Foods Co-op. Marksbury Farm Market. Weisenberger Mill. Hello and welcome to Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen. Hi. With Nikki Farmer. <laughs> what? Looks pretty, doesn't it? Looks kind of pretty. This is the uh, Thanksgiving edition. You know, it's funny. We put a thing on Facebook, and I was talking to people about when do you think is the proper time to uh, start thinking about Christmas. Now, immediately, it lit up in hundreds and hundreds of responses. The, the thing we got the most was probably, if it makes you happy, do it. This is about Christmas time. The right. memories you have as a kid, Thanksgiving is approaching Christmas, Christmas music, that feeling of innocence you have as a kid. That's why we do it. I didn't do this either. It wasn't me. Oh, uh, you can't blame me. I can't blame me. You can't blame me. Carolyn. Carolyn did it, did you? Yeah, Carolyn. Carolyn did it. Yeah. I knew she did it. She brought Bob with her, too. You know what? We are. <laughs> Christmas gussied up. We're ready to go. And that doesn't hurt my feelings. No. At all. And we're not apologizing for it. If it's not your thing, don't do it. I kind of like it. I love it. It's pretty. Yes, it is. All right. That being said, traditions. A goose. The tradition of the goose, especially European. That's what you had at Christmas time. When you read uh, Charles Dickens or anything, they talk about mm -hmm. having Christmas the, the Christmas goose. Christmas is coming. The goose is getting fat. Please put a penny in the old man's I know that song. And people say, oh, it's too greasy. We've gotten away from traditions. They wouldn't have eaten geese if they weren't delicious. Right. This is a domestic goose. Look at this thing. Look at the fat on this thing. They say, oh, it's too greasy. When you break down a turkey versus a goose versus a chicken, there's no more calories. There's no more fat, per se, once you cook the fat out, than there is in a chicken or a turkey. What's the difference in taste? Turkey is kind of bland. Mm-hmm. They've been domesticated down and domesticated down. Goose has flavor, rich flavor, not gamey flavor, rich, mild flavor. Right. It is absolutely delicious. The skin on this goose is so fantastic. And on a duck, on a domestic duck, it's so fantastic. Now, if you cook one that's been shot, it's a lot of work. This guy's been walking around eating grass. Now, by very nature, they are a ranging animal. They eat grass and such. Now, we're going to do this for Thanksgiving. What I'm going to do to prep this, it's, it may seem fairly complicated, and it is a little bit more labor-intensive than some things, but we're going to put a beautiful stuffing inside of this. I've been reading on this for hundreds of years. People have had different ideas about what to do, how to get him going. Some people say you should pierce the skin to let the fat run out. Other people say it's going to come out anyway. You might just poke a little hole around the leg or something like that. I'm not going to do too much puncturing of that. It, the grease is going to come out. Some people also say to start it breast side down, hmm. cook it at a high temperature for a half hour, and let some of that fat run off. A lot of people say turn it on its side, do this, do that. I have found that if you just take this guy, put the stuffing in it, leave it breast side up, 
and just let it go, you'll do fine. So we're going to take this guy and get him all duded up and fixed up. This is going to be our Thanksgiving bird. Okay. But meanwhile, let's get the stuffing going. Let's start with about four pieces of bacon. This is uncured bacon, and we're going to let that cook on down. With goose, uh, cranberries go really well, uh, apples go really well, a little zest of a lemon or an orange in there is really good. And we're going to put some rice and maybe a little bit of bread just to okay. hold things up and hold things together. Okay, Nikki, while I'm doing this, if you will, once you slice that onion up. How much you need of this? Uh, let's do most of it. Medium-sized yellow sweet onion. There you go. Put them in real tight. Make good. A, make a seal. <laughs> A little slice. fingernail size. All right. We ask you to challenge yourself, to step outside your comfort zone, to try something you never tried before. The world of food is so fascinating. And when you open a door, it opens another door. When you learn how one seasoning tastes, you want to try something else. Don't ever limit yourself. I was talking to somebody today, and I was telling them that I was going to fix some goose. Ooh! I said, wait! Have you ever tried it? Well, no. How do you know yeah. if you've never tried it? That's the typical reaction to any kind of wild game or any kind of something that's, that might sound out of the ordinary. And I explained to her, I said, you eat chicken. Well, I grew up with chicken. Step outside your comfort zone, please. You live but once. There's so much good stuff to try out there. So I'm going to get this bacon all nice and crispy up. You know what it tastes like. You know what duck and goose tastes like. I mean, you can find these just about anywhere. Yeah. Especially around the holiday. Right. They start bringing them in. That's ready. Okay. Come back with a little butter. All right, now we're going to drop our onions in here. All these? Yep. Okay. All right, now we're going to get these nice and translucent. Then we're going to come back with the liver. That's going to be part okay. of this stuffing. We're going to fry that up, cut it up. All right, Nikki, if you will, while I'm doing this, would you peel and core me two apples mm -hmm. and then cut those up in little squares? Okay, now as our onions are still getting there and you're peeling the apples, it's a bit of a process here. Now, there's more than one way you can do this. The duck, we did on the big green egg with a little right. hickory on there. The flavor of that skin with a little hickory flavor and the charcoal was just absolutely wonderful. We're gonna do our goose like that. You can do it in the oven if you choose to do it that way. Preheat your oven to about 400 degrees because you want to initially get that heat up and let some of that fat and those juices escape when this cooks at that high temperature, for the first half hour, we're going to let it go pretty high. You're going to get a bunch of runoff in your pan. What size apples would you like? Halves, quarters of these? Cut them into little chunks. Little chunks? Yep. The sweet, along with the cranberry. Now we've got some fresh sage. Yum. That adds a wonderful taste. Stuffing in your goose, as anything else, will increase your time of cooking to some degree. You're going to go 22 to 24 minutes per pound or until you reach a temperature of about 180 degrees. And we're getting there on this. That's about all we need. Tell you what, Nikki, if you don't mind, would you take the bacon mm -hmm. and crumble it up in here? Add it to your onions. Mm -hmm. Oh my. Now imagine this along with some brown rice, which you've already cooked and set aside. And you can do some bread too if you want to hold it together. Would you take me about a third of a cup of cranberries and chop mm -hmm. those up? All right. I'm going to take this liver right here. I'm just going to set it in here. Hmm. Going to fry that up. That all becomes a part of this as well. Just want little slices. Yep. All right. All right. Now we have our liver and onions. All right. Let's take our apples. And toss them in there. Take our cranberries. I need about a teaspoon of sage. A little marjoram. Look how colorful that is. Good. A little salt, a little pepper. There we go. Now, once we get all that tossed in, 
Let's go ahead and add, and this is about two cups of rice. Let's do two cups of rice. You know, let's do about a cup of bread too. Just a little tiny. Yep, just for some more filler. Oh, I smell that sage in there that's now. That's good. Let's put some orange zest in there. You can do lemon. I challenge you to try some stuff if you've never tried before. Now, we're ready to stuff this bird. Now, I have salt and peppered the inside of the bird a little bit. Okay. We have poked three holes, one here, one here, and one in the tail, and we're gonna tie those all together. So, if you will. I get the fun job. Stuff that bird. Now, this is a automatic side when you're done. I got a big cavity in there. You wanna impress your friends? You wanna really try something different? Go buy you a goose. It is not gamey. I'm gonna repeat, it is not gamey. It is just rich and smooth and beautiful. All right, we're full. Ready to bring all that stuff up together, tie that off. We're just basically closing the cavity of the bird off so all those juices can stay in there. Now, let's take that string and just Tie the legs together just a little bit. All right. Hold everything together. We're a good team, aren't we? Yeah, absolutely. All right, now we're adding oil not because we need oil per se, but we just basically want to make sure that the salt and pepper sticks to the outside of the bird. And the other side's already done. And that is what that's going to look like. Now, for the first half hour, we're gonna get four, 425 in between there. Now we're gonna do this on the big green egg, and there's a reason why, because that flavor imparts such a wonderful, rolls up around that bird, and oh, it crisps up so nice. All right, you wanna put him on? Let's do it. Let's go. All right, we love tradition. Mm -hmm. We love family. Right. A lot of our recipes come from family right. and friends. This particular recipe right here is a cranberry recipe, which mm -hmm. goes really good with goose, as does a sweet potato casserole Yummy. that you're making. Yes. That comes from family. These two right here, look at this picture right here. This is a picture of my family. Uh, Mom, who, when you make your sweet potato casserole, what does she use? She says do you squash, butternut squash. Butternut squash, and let me tell you it's what, delicious. it's good because I've had it. Now, Debbie makes cranberry sauce that people fight over every year. Right. You're going to make something kind of like that. She has a secret. She I'm has gonna a use, secret. I'm going to use she her secret. secret. Go ahead and start us off with that. A lot of people just buy a package of these, the cranberries, and read it right off the back, which you can do. Mm -hmm. And actually, we got organic, which mm -hmm. I found, which is wonderful. So it's eight ounces. A lot of people do 12, but we're going to do an eight-ounce recipe, which is small. It's just enough for you and I. Okay. You can double. So pretty much, we're going to put in our... Eight ounces of cranberries. Goose is just, I'm telling Wonderful. you, goose and duck. Wonderful. Try a domestic one. Eighth cup of water. And sugar, we have got a third cup of sugar. And I'm gonna put some lemon juice in here. So we want about two teaspoons worth. So I'm just gonna kinda eyeball it here, what I like, because this is just something we're kinda adding on our own. A little zing? Yes, and we're also gonna put a little orange peel in there. And later on, we're gonna squeeze a little bit of juice out of this orange and add it to it too. I like a little bit of orange flavor in mine. So you can be my stirrer if you'd like. Mr. Yes, yeah, so we're gonna stir this until we get all the sugar melted, and then we're gonna turn it up a little. So you want your setting on your burn to be very low at first. At low at first, so we get, get yeah, so we get it all melted. And while you're doing that, I'm gonna go ahead and squeeze, because when we get done with this, we're gonna put a little bit of orange juice in there too. We like that orange flavor. And then Debbie's secrets at the end. Mm -hmm. And she told me we could share her secret. Looks like it's all melted. So let's go ahead, you wanna turn it up a little bit? Crank it up a hair. To a medium, and we're gonna let this go from six to eight minutes, and you're gonna see this all kinda. Of, These uh, cranberries yeah, start to they're pop. gonna pop, and they're gonna start to cook down, and they're gonna look absolutely delicious. Six minutes after they start to burst. That's right. This is so simple, you'll never buy it out of a can again. Boy, it's really cooking the juices out of it. Doesn't it smell good? It sure does, you can smell the orange. Another thing Debbie said is she'll make this sometimes a couple days early. She likes to let it let sit. It chill. And let it chill, and just it gets a little bit better. Okay, it looks like you're there. Okay. Go ahead and turn it off. All right. And this is the little thing we're going to do here. We're going to pour that orange we had. Mm -hmm. I'm going to pour it's a quarter cup. We're going to do a quarter cup of orange juice in this. Go ahead and stir that around. And then we're going to put Debbie's magic ingredient. You ready for the magic ingredient? I'm ready. I'm not scared. Hold your spoon up. This is orange gelatin. That is the secret. She says it takes the bite out. And you can, we're going to put about a tablespoon. 
because we made a small then we'll also firm that up. Give it a little more orange. 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 And then we're going to stick this in the fridge for four to five hours while your goose is cooking, and we'll have cranberry. Let it set, let it roll, let it chill. Mm -hmm. All right, let's visually lay this feast out. I can't wait. I'm starving. Can't. We have our goose, which is not cooked yet. Yum. The stuffing Yum. is a nice, wonderful side. Your sweet potato casserole on page 13 of the cookbook. Our cranberry relish. Cranberry relish and Brussels sprouts. Think wow. of the colors. Yum. All right, but before that happens, if we went out in the front porch right now, it'd be really cold. Yes, it would. A couple weeks ago, it wasn't that cold, and we had two morons out there. I'm Lardo. And I'm Burley. And we're, we're the, the Moron, Moron Brothers. Brothers. Got a frog in my throat. Now, that's at a higher temperature. We're gonna bring it down after that. Okay. But if you can see into this pan, look how much grease there is. Now we're thinking ahead now, probably about a half a cup of water, half a cup of chicken stock, and this is a Vidal Blanc with white wine in here, because we're thinking about gravy for later. Also, if you want to think about your gravy that's coming up later, mm -hmm. we put a couple peppercorns in there, uh, bay leaf, and maybe you could put a little fresh thyme, which mm -hmm. we did. Yes. Maybe a little more sage if you like that taste. Look at how it's already starting to turn golden brown. It already smells good. Now I'm going to turn the temperature down. So again, when it gets 180 degrees around the thigh area, we're good to go. Let's take him back out and put him back on. What you got? Well, I, these are, this is our sweet potato casserole, gotcha. and I got two of the kind of whiter sweet potatoes and two in the red, just because I like the colors. Mm -hmm. And this is going to give us about three cups, so if you could mash those up, you'd be our masher. Mm -hmm. And while you're mashing... Skin I'm, on. Yes, I like skin on. This is a half a cup of butter. That's where a lot of the nutrients are, by the way, in the skin. Yeah, I know, it's the best part. How mashed do you want I'm like, really mashed? Yeah, just keep going, because I'm going to just keep adding stuff. you got a half cup of butter. In fact, this is in our cookbook, okay. this recipe if you need it. Let's add a cup of sugar. Now, my mom's vari variation on this would be, again, and it's delicious, Right. butternut squash. Trust me on that. It's it would really be good. good. Let me get you two eggs. Keep adding in there. And a teaspoon of vanilla. And that's going to be our base. If that's not sweet enough, wait till you see what we put on the top. So. And how mashed do you want it? I like it mashed. That looks pretty good. I like, I like about a, there? I like a little bit of chunks, do you? All right. Sounds good to me. All right. You want to scrape casserole all that dish? for me? Okay. Let's get it all in this casserole dish. And if you might have missed some episodes, timfarmerscountrykitchen.com, catch up, 
Check out our Facebook page, Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen. Like it, see what we're doing, where we're going, and keep up to date on all the Country Kitchen fun. All right, where do we go from here? All right, now we're gonna have, make a topping for this. Okay. And this is a quarter cup of flour. All right. I'll put in there. I got a half a cup of brown sugar. All right. All right, now two and a half tablespoons of butter. And then we have a cup of pecans. Now, what are we, uh, what temperature are we preheating the oven for here? The oven is at 350, and this, it only has to cook about 40 minutes, depending on when your goose is gonna be ready. We can throw that in right when you think it's about ready. I'm just gonna sprinkle this on the top. Yeah, you, I guess you could use our walnuts too on this, couldn't you? If you chose to. And that's it. We're gonna stick that in the oven. 350 for 40 minutes. 40 minutes. minutes. It'll Wonderful. be delicious. It's almost like dessert, vegetable dessert. You know, we need to get, we need to get your potatoes out. Okay. Our Brussels sprouts, which have been cooking in the background. We're almost done. I love it when a plan comes together. All right, let's get the goose in. Okay. We'll bring the Brussels in. We're almost there. Eat some dinner. Let's go. Yummy. Wait I've got that. good news and I've got bad news. What? First of all, it looks delicious. What's the bad news? And it smells delicious. Yeah. It's got to rest for ah. 25 minutes. Why? So I tell you what, let's do. Let's get him out, set him on the okay. platter, let him look all golden beautiful, let him set a few minutes, and it's time for dinner. All righty. Thanksgiving dinner. Can we eat? You think it's worth the wait? Yes. That looks all right. wonderful. It's Thanksgiving. What are you thankful for? I am thankful for you because you're so precious and I'm sweet. And you're such a good cook. And you feed me. What do you think? So sweet. What are you thankful I'm for? Thankful for this goose. Okay. And you. Okay. Here, let's slice. Ready? Oh my goodness. That is a beautiful plate. Oops. That is we pretty. hit our meat right here underneath this. Oh, how is it? Mm. The richness. That's delicious. No gamey taste whatsoever. Your stuffing's amazing. Mm. There's a piece of liver right there. I had some too. Mm. Mm, 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 mm. Mm -hmm. Homemade cranberry sauce. This is worth waiting. Mm. And before we turn the cameras off, how did yeah. all this Christmas stuff get here? I don't know. I didn't do it. I mean, I, I might have done a little. It wasn't me. It was Carol and Bob. They did everything. They From snuck Stanford. up here. They snuck up here. I'll tell you what. They did a beautiful <laughs> they did. job. Let's take a tour around the cabin real quick. Tim and Nikki go. They're in the other part of the cabin you never see. And take a look. We're gonna talk about Christmas decorations. And a lot of times you don't see this angle. That's the front door, obviously, where we come off the porch. There's a 1932 GE refrigerator that works like a charm. And as we show you our Christmas decorations, we come on around to the table. We have our nice little meals. And look what a pretty little centerpiece. Isn't that Christmassy? Let's start back on this side, and there's where we do our meal call, back in the corner. And there's the loft up ahead where the grandkids sleep. And our pretty little Christmas tree that looks just like something we cut down out of the woods and put some popcorn on. Back in the corner, our tiny piano. And that's a tour, a Christmas tour. Carolyn and you, and Bob did a really good job. Oh, that's delicious, too. Mmm. Mm. Sweet potatoes are wonderful. Happy Thanksgiving. Mm-hmm. It was all about... Good times. Good friends. And good eats. And would say we'll see you next week for Ten Farmers Country Kitchen, but it's the pledge drive. Don't forget to remember K-E-T. And we'll see you next time on mm. Ten Farmers Country Kitchen. The skin mm. is delicious. Mm, 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 Try a piece of that. To order a cookbook or DVD of the show, please call 502-319-0487 or email timfarmerck at gmail.com. Special thanks to Furniture World Superstore. 
Kinco Farm Fence Supplies. Tater Knob Pottery and Farm. Funding for Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen brought to you by L81 Bottling Company. Taste, love, and share the tradition. Harvest Energy Solutions, harvest cabins when you absolutely have to get away. Housewarmings, meeting all of your outdoor living and fireplace needs. Kentucky Sheep and Goat Development Office, try something different tonight. Rose Farm Supply, family farming and commitment to our customers since 1982. Salt Rocks, the flavor of life. Woods Equipment Company has every tool you need to make working the land as rewarding as hunting it. The city of Stanford, Kentucky. Come home to Stanford. Chrisman Mill Vineyards. Good Foods Co-op. Marksbury Farm Market. Weisenberger Mill.